two layers of shirts or clothing. So people are just trying to nitpick. The horrendous thing is, the hoax of it all, is the fact that people are jumping on this. Like they say, never let a bad situation go to waste. And people are jumping on it. They're using it. They got to the family while they're emotional. And they're trying to push for gun control. Now, Jakari, I don't know if you found the, the video yet, but he was telling me earlier, right when I got in, that uh, there's footage of the father saying that, yeah, he's going to go out and buy a gun. He's a gun supporter. But you have the people, that you have the government, you have the mainstream media, MSNBC, I was up late last night watching, and they're sitting there going, oh, you know, guns are bad. And you got Pierce Morgan tweet, uh, it's another senseless act of violence, gun violence in America. How many more do we have to have before we get rid of guns and end this? You know, right. It's the same narrative every single time. And you talk about those who think it was a staged event, which we have two things that happen every single time during a shooting. Right. So first and foremost, we have the gun control pushers. And it's so funny to me that we even continue to debate gun control. If you look at the FBI statistics and again, this isn't even an area that I'm super into at this moment, but I've done time and time again videos on this. Just I remember the FBI, FBI statistics It's nine hundred eighty thousand uh, potential deaths, so it's it's crimes that could relate to death or stopped every single year from gun use, like a you know brandishing a firearm or something like that. It's stopping so many deaths over and over again, and there's less than what 900 overall deaths from pistols every single year in the United States. And of those, you know, how many are criminals? It's such a, a lame debate to even have. I mean, look at it. Go back to biblical times. They didn't have guns. What did they use? Cain and Abel, rocks. And do you really think that guy was going to not kill the woman and the cameraman if he didn't have a gun? He'd been planning for he was over deeply a, mentally yeah, ill. This guy was out of control, out of his mind. He had been sitting there methodically planning this entire thing out for so long. If he could have got his hand on a gun, he would have figured something out. He would have ran him off the road. He could have ran up and stabbed the camera guy first because that's a bigger threat, a bigger guy. And then went after the lady. You know, there's all kinds of ways. If somebody intends to do harm, and they have that hate in their heart. They will figure out a way to carry out that attack. Well, remember and the so school stabbing, too. I believe the kid killed or at least stabbed seven or eight or nine, seven, eight, nine people. And he didn't have a gun. He had a, a, a box cutter or something like I that. Mean, I, I really want to go out and do a social experiment while I, I lay a pistol down somewhere out in public, you know, and just watch how many people walk by and get footage of that and show that the gun is not gonna grow arms and legs, stand up and go on a shooting rampage. It's not gonna happen. It takes a sick individual to get behind that and use that tool for the wrong reasons. But just because a bad accident happened, because a crime happens, we shouldn't have to demonize and or strip liberties away from people. The right to protect themselves shall not be infringed, you know? Yes. And we, we, Go ahead. I, would, I do want to take calls, but at the same time, I also want to relate what you're saying to the internet. Because you could say that the internet, oh, it's a tool of horrible things. It's made people kill themselves. You know, children have killed themselves. Uh, defamation has happened. All these horrible things have happened. The internet is an open source tool for those to do good and spread the word like we do or ruin people's lives. And a great example of that is a San Antonio police officer. His email popped up on the Ashley Madison uh, account. You can go and check to see if your uh, email pops on there. Mm -hmm. He committed suicide. He thought that his family was going to hate him, this and that. And it come, uh, come to find out it was a cop block guy who wrote this, made up a lie, and put that in there. Ban so, the internet. Ban the internet. I think we should probably ban the internet. But let's take a couple calls. Let's talk to Jason on Black Lives Matter, because I know Joe wants to speak on this specifically. Jason, what's up? Hey, guys. How you doing? Um, yeah, I was just, you know, I'm just, I'm, I guess I'm just frustrated that Black Lives Matter would have the audacity to go to a state fair where there's family, children, kids, trying to enjoy, you know, a day to celebrate Minnesota, its culture and all that stuff. And you're going to have these people protesting. And, you know, they're not peaceful protesters either. You know, they're, they're you know, they, they block people. They, they do stuff. It's I mean, artificial they protest. They Capitol or a police department. They should, you know, I, I just don't understand it. And I'm, you know, I'm going to have to. Be in that mix. I don't know how far into it I'm going to be or, you know, what's going to happen. But, I mean, I'm, I'm sure verbally I'm going to be a little, you know, a little loud at them. 
Right. And Joe, I want your take on this, but my my view on this is it's artificial form of protesting. Because if you really want to protest something, like March Against Monsanto is a real protest movement. They go to capitals, they get permits, they speak about facts, they speak about Roundup being linked to cancer by the World Health Organization. I've spoken at them. It's real. It's a real thing. And also at the same time, I support awesome black people, transgender people like the ones earlier who were saying arrest Hillary Clinton. They're awesome. I don't care. You can be transgender, do whatever you want. I have no ill will to these people. But at the same time, if it's artificially inflated that, oh, you hate black people, you hate transgendered people. No, I don't. Not at all. You're going to go and, and block the highway and tell me that I'm a bad person for no reason other than me literally being white. That is the most racist thing you could possibly do. And you have firsthand experience with all this stuff. Yeah, see, there's a lot of people out there in the Black Lives Matter movement that I've met personally in Ferguson, great people, and, and they're there for pure reasons. But you have people like DeRay McKesson, the, the so-called head of Black Lives Matter, who uses racism to so-called defeat racism. He, he, he calls people out on their whiteness, and you know, I, I try to confront him a couple times, and I talk to him, and he's like, oh, just excuse your whiteness. Get your whiteness away from me. That's extremely racist. How are you going to beat racism by being blatantly racist in, in his tweets all the time? All it does is stir up young people who are emotional, who have maybe had something happen in their lifetime, and they use that, that hate. And then you have the Revcom come in, and they boost them up even more, the Revolutionary Communist Party. These guys show up to these events, and they help stir the pot. And it, it, it takes something that could be pure, and it turns into this hijacked protest that's really pointless, where the caller said, People are showing up, they're harassing people. That takes away from what's really going on. And my advice to you right now, if you're going to go to this event tomorrow, sir, is to just be careful as to what you say in a sense because they're all filming and you don't want to be that next guy that they try to post up everywhere and it completely They'll edit ruins. you. They'll make you look yeah, totally I mean, insane. The, the good hold news your is ground, but just don't. Don't lose your cool or your temper. Yeah, they will try to egg you on. Right. But no, no, I don't want to do that. I mean, these people, I mean, they told them not to come to the Mall of America. What do they do? They come to the Mall of America. And, and, wow, and congratulations. You like, crashed a, they, a diner in some mall. You know, I mean, that's such an absurd form of protest. But the good news is all my black friends, and I'd like to hear your take, Jason and Joe, all my sure. black friends are legitimately concerned about real things and know that these Black Lives Matter people are just completely artificial. Oh, it, it, you're absolutely right. I, I mean, I got a friend that's going to pick me up in an hour to bring me to work. He's black. He's totally, he listens to Alex Jones. He's all about freedom. He, there's no color barrier. But we're racist right now but for mentioning that guys, we have black friends. Jason, here's how they're winning, though. We have to make that differentiation. My friend's coming to pick me up. He's black. Purple we penguin. wouldn't even have to talk about I that. purple no. penguin picking me up. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, <laughs> yes, obviously. But I'm saying we wouldn't we wouldn't have to make that distinction if they weren't forcing us to. Like, I wouldn't have to say my black friends know this is crazy. I would just say my friends know this is crazy. But they're making it about race, and that is their objective. That is the point. That's why they are beating us and succeeding in some ways. They're making it about race. They're claiming they're fighting racism, but all they're doing is bringing it down to the lowest common denominator of separation, which is racial divide. It's a total joke. Would you agree? Oh, of course. I mean, like I said, I've, I've got a lot of my friends in uh, Charlotte right now. They uh, There was a cop in 2013, I believe it was, uh, stopped to help a young man, shot and killed him. There was a mistrial last week, and then North Carolina just came out and said that they're not going to hold another trial on this officer, and he essentially is going to be let go. So people have taken to the streets. That's a good reason. Go out and protest that. You stop, you ask for a cop to help you, and you get murdered. That's a reason to go out and protest. That's what protesting is for. But then when you go out and you start stopping traffic, or there's a pregnant person out there, there's a miscarriage that happens because of that, now this is turning into something bad. It was just like when I was in uh, Cincinnati, I believe, the, uh, the Black Lives Matter protesters were out there outside of the stadium during the NBA playoffs. And they threw a chair through a window and then started pepper spraying people. How does that help your cause? It, it, all it does is obviously show the true intentions. Jason, thanks so much for your call. Let's go to Barbara on similar subject on money. She wants to talk about a number of things. Barbara, how's it going? I'm doing well. Thank you very much. Awesome. Well, let's I, summarize your point real quick. We're about to go to break, and then we'll talk as soon as we get back. So okay. tell us what's going on. Um, I have a solution for the Black Lives Matter and racist remarks and things. And then I wanted to mention that people should make sure that they shouldn't have old money in their possession. Because we never know when they're going to take it off of the market.
Yeah. Well, that's absolutely. You should have hard assets. You should have real estate, whatever you possibly can. We will be back in just a few minutes. We're going to talk about the Pope coming and aligning with Obama, EPA rulings, different power grabs going on, and much, much more. Stay tuned. Thank you for watching and listening to The Alex Jones Show. Welcome back to The Alex Jones Show. I'm Anthony Gucciardi sitting in for Alex Jones with Joe Biggs. We're talking about a number of topics. We're going to take more calls throughout this final hour of the show. We're going to talk about how this day trader made $34 million while the economy was collapsing. We're going to talk about the Pope aligning with Obama and what that means. We're going to talk a little bit more about Black Lives Matter, some things that are going on throughout this weekend, and the Financial Times calling for the abolishment of cash. We're talking to Barbara, a caller, and she was talking about holding hard assets. And I want to let her finish. And I want to precurse that with a statement that in all of these collapse scenarios, and I want to talk about the abolishment of cash and what that would mean for us and what that would mean for the wealthy elite. It's always the case that someone is making cash. Someone is making money big time. And I believe there is a secretive way with the abolishment of cash that would, as Alex was talking about earlier, fix the issue where we were saying the banks are laundering so much cash, they're running the drugs. How could they make money if cash was abolished? I have an idea that I want to throw out on that. But Barbara, finishing up, you were talking about an economic collapse. What were you saying? Okay. Okay. What I, I came to think about was once when a friend in, of mine, a friend and I went to Cancun. She brought back some of their colorful dollars, and they had said she couldn't cash it in because that money was already taken off of the market. And then... You know, I had a little bit of money stored, and I went to look, and a lot of the bills didn't have the color on them. So if they were going to really upset people, that could be one of the scenarios that they pull, that automatically they say that the money without the color is not any good anymore. Oh, I get so what you're saying. So they could sure. kind of change the standard of the dollar bill and then say everyone with the old dollar bill is no longer allowed to use that cash. That's an interesting concept. I'd definitely not heard of that before. Barbara, thank you for your call. Right, because, Let's, sorry to interrupt you, Barbara. I, that was very interesting. Let's go to Gary in Phoenix. What's going on, Gary? Hey, how's it going, guys? Hey, hey. You might know me better as uh, Extramental on Facebook and such. Awesome, man. First What's on your mind? Long time listener. Two quick points, the GMO battle. Uh, you know, this is just showing that the little guy does have a voice and that we just need to keep on the pressure. I mean, a lot of these uh, movements, you know, with Oregon, you know, getting rid of GMOs is because of the little guy. No, that's so right. That's Small acts multiplied by on. millions can change the world. Well, it's interesting. As a child, I remember my father you know, hey, man, you want to go to Burger King? You want to get like a sausage biscuit or something like that? And you would drive by and you would see Burger King completely full, the parking lot, McDonald's completely full, people waiting around the line. Now it looks like a ghost parking lot where there's nothing going on. That is the most amazing thing in the world. You know, what was it back during South by Southwest? I uh, dressed up as Donald McRonald. Oh, yeah, we got kicked out of McDonald's yeah. together. And, 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 and yeah. we talked to some people, and people were like, yeah, I eat here anyways, but I always feel like crap the next day, or I, I currently don't feel good right now, but I'm still going to go in anyways. And that, you know, that's what yeah. I, I, I don't understand. Why would you purposely hurt yourself? But the great thing is, though, is like you said, a lot of these people are standing up. A lot of these marches going on. People are standing up against GMO. They're saying, you know what? I'm done. And people are speaking with their dollars. It is awesome to see these guys get shut down. Voting with your dollar is my favorite way of activism. I think it really, really works. And it reminds me, you know, he brought up Donald, uh, Ron, whatever it was. Donald McRonald. Donald McRonald. So it's a puzzle in my mind. And how he went to McDonald. I remember getting kicked out. I mean, the security guard literally dragged me out, pushed me out because I said, what is in your McNuggets? I, I went into the line, into the... Well, there's the, silicone breast implant fillers inside there. Of course, well, I know what's in it. I wanted to see if they knew what's in it. I wasn't even actually on... I wasn't, like, being... I wasn't on in the camera piece. I was like, hey, what's in your McNuggets? And they're like, oh, oh, my God, oh, my God. And they got the security guys, you need to leave, and pushed me out of there. That's why we came back with you <laughs> in costume, and we asked them, hey, what's going on? Do you know what's in your food? And everyone we asked was like, yeah, we know what's in our food. We know it's GMOs. We know it's toxic compounds. We know it's silicon fillers. We know it's total junk. But, you know, that's fine. We don't care. It tastes good. there's still good. people out there who don't know that. And that's fine. If you make a conscious decision to yeah. make that choice and put that in your body, by all means, you have that freedom to do so. But our job is to try to at least waken up the people 
who yeah. don't know that, and maybe they aren't comfortable with that, and that's kind of why they're feeling bad, and they see that, and they're like, well, maybe that's why I don't feel good after I eat this. Maybe I need to make a change. Yeah, it is true. The ones I've talked to seem to know, but the one, every single person you asked, they were like, oh, well, I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't care. Yeah. I love McDonald's. And some of them, though, actually were freaked out, and they said, I'm not eating this ever again. Yeah. Because once people realize the truth of what's 